All right, everybody, welcome, and thank you for listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul, and you are listening to The Adam Messer Show. I'm your host, Adam Messer, and today, as a really neat follow-up we have from last week's show, when I talked with Michelle Cornwall-Jordan and Bruce Latimer, I actually have the two of the uh, primary actors from when androids dream and monstrum series Um, we have brianna r jordan and dominique green welcome ladies thank you so much for being here on the show with me today hello thank you for having me thank you for having us yeah so um sebastian would you mind playing a little bit of music for us this is uh sebastian messer everybody and um ladies this is my son he plays uh music on the show for me every week so I just love that new song, Bass. I just love it. He he actually came up with that song like two days ago. Like created it himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh, love it. I like it. <laughs> All right. So um could we could uh could y'all do like a little introduction of yourselves, um uh, who you are and also the character uh, that you played in the series? Uh, uh, yeah, Brown. Yeah. If you want to go first, it's okay. Yeah, either sure. way. <laughs> okay. Yes, um, I'm Brianna R. Jordan, and I play the character Dominique Coutte in the Monstrum short film and the web drama When Android Stream. Hello, I am Dominique Green, and I play Baby, Baby J in When Android Stream, and I play um, Phoenix in Monstrum. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm pre- I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited about having y'all on. I I tell you what. Um, so a little backstory if anybody's just dipping into the show today for the first time a friend of mine uh, Rachel Brune introduced me to uh, Michelle Cornwall Jordan who is the mm-hmm. executive um, executive producer director she's the she's the person behind the 4CW media productions and uh, we set up an interview and I was like oh you know what let me check this out let me check the series out you know because I like sci-fi I like you know stuff with action and that kind of stuff so i watched i actually watched when androids dream first and Mm -hmm. i loved it and then i went back and i I got monstrum and i watched that and i was like oh now a lot of this stuff makes sense you know yeah and yeah and i actually picked up i can't remember the name of it but i actually picked up the um the dance one that um that she has and that you were in what's it called oh could Okay, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't watched that one yet, but I picked it up on, on my Vimeo account or whatever, and I tell you, I am really impressed. I, I'll be honest with you, I was so enthused and excited about um, being able to talk with your mom and with Bruce, um, and uh, I keep saying your mom because <laughs> Brianna, it's your mom, but I, you know what I mean, Dominique. It's like yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll say Michelle from now on. But I was uh, I was really excited to be able to talk with her because as an indie creator myself, I always love connecting with other creative people. So working, yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So, um, what was it like being on set and doing the roles? How did how did y'all and um, get into all of that and what did you think about like you know playing some of the lead characters and and Dominique was the basically the lead character but um, and when I say Dominique I mean like the uh, Dominique in the series <laughs> right yeah okay I love it yeah yeah and then Dominique Green you're the actor that plays like the sister right mm-hmm. so I, I think you had a really great role too because yours was like a you know like a lead character as well in both series. Mm-hmm. So could can you all tell me like you know what was it like being on set and doing all that and then seeing it all come together? 
Well, for me, it actually really made me respect actors and actresses even more because the role that I played, she's not all that um, flamboyant, I guess, if you could say. She's more so kind of inner, but when she's passionate about something, that's when you see a lot of her emotions. So when you play a character like that, it's kind of hard to balance that, balance the whole not showing a lot of emotion, but then showing a lot. And Mm -hmm. so that was really... um, it was kind of hard to navigate it, but it was really, it was fun. It was interesting because she does, um, my character has a lot of the qualities that I do, but I don't always show it to people. Like, um, I always said that she says some of the things that I would like to say, but don't. Mm. So, um, I do, um, playing that character was really fun. And then like, uh, also on set, it was kind of interesting because Michelle, anytime she was, um, addressing some of us, she would call us by our character names. So okay, there was okay. a slight confusion sometimes when she was saying Dominique, she was referring to me, but you no, know, the other Dominique. I'll be like, hey, huh? <laughs> and and your character was Phoenix in the in the show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, on set, it was very cold because I think for Monster we filled in like January. Mm. Yeah. So that was <laughs> That was a rough time working on there, but, like, it kind of brought everyone closer because it's like, oh, we're all in the same cold situation. Huddle up so, for warmth kind of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gave yes. us a little bit more um, chemistry, I guess you can say, and a little bit yeah. more bonding time. And within that area, it kind of made me feel closer to Phoenix because it's, like, kind of put me to where she could have been in in the script. And mm-hmm. as far as with um, when Android stream, it was a little colder it was like in November, but it wasn't as cold as in January. So like with working on in, when Android stream, it kind of I don't know. That also put me into the script, but a little bit more so than and than Monstrum. My bad. And um, I don't know. I felt that connection mm-hmm. working with the, you know having the same crew and the same actors working together for when Android stream. At least most of us it kind of bonded us even closer after that. Yeah. yeah you could really see the onset chemistry. Um, I, I felt, you know, that's one of the things I was talking with Michelle. I was like, you know, I really enjoyed the, um, story, you know, because mm-hmm. with the, the way that y'all played your characters, the way you all acted, you know, you could feel, you could feel that chemistry and that bond. Um, and it was neat. <laughs> it's kind of uh, with going back from, when Android's dream, which is episodic, it's it's like you know, like um, short ten to fifteen minute episodes, and going back to Monstrum, which is like a short film, like I think it's like thirty five or forty minutes or something like that. Um, yeah, like that. Watching it, you know, they seem like you could take both and put them together, and it would, yeah. you, you know, mm-hmm. they they flow. They don't feel disjointed. Like sometimes you have like a sequel or a follow up. It's, you know, uh-huh. it, you know what I mean. Yeah. It doesn't quite hit the mark. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. I felt yeah, like with true. with the two that you know, especially I watched them backwards, um, mm. and because I didn't realize uh, it was it's kind of strange, but I I was I just met Michelle, and I wanted to check out the When Androids Dream, and I picked it up on launch day, which was a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago on a Friday, and uh, mm-hmm. so I was like, oh wait a minute, there's this other this other monster thing, and I'm like. Oh, it's the same universe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I fell in love with that. I was like, oh, my gosh. And, you know, I've I've become a a big fan of of Michelle's work and and y'all's work and, you know, the the monster verse. So and I'm excited to have y'all here today. I mean, honestly, that's one of the things I like about being a radio show. I can be like, (laughs) hey, can I interview you? And sometimes people say yes and sometimes they, they don't. So. To be honest, this is like my first podcast too, so I was kind of nervous leading up to it. But like, I don't know, just kind of like calm down. Yeah, yeah. That is kind of a question. Yeah, I agree. It's the same thing with me. It's like I didn't know. I, I can predict what would happen beforehand, so I just decided not mm-hmm. to overthink it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm the same way. I overthink things a lot, and I've had to just kind of, you know, it's like yeah, if I'm going to go with it, I just try to you know get in the moment <laughs> so you go with the flow. yeah 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 you gotta you know kind of just roll with it sometimes and speaking of speaking of rolling with it I, you know that's a, actually a great segue um this was 
pretty much for both y'all, this is like one of the first times you've been doing an acting role, right? Or have uh, you like actually, acted before? Yeah. Sorry, uh, the question is, cut out. What did you say? I was saying, is this like one of the first times that you've done an acting role or have you acted before? Oh, no. This isn't my first one. Yeah, it's not my um, first. I've worked on a couple other projects. Some uh, some others with Miss Michelle, but then uh, like about seven others with um, some other directors and other um, crafts and crews around the Texas area. Well, that's good because I wanted to ask you, how did you decide that you wanted to be an actor? Ooh. Well, for me at least, um, it was about when I was around eight years old and I used to watch Selena Gomez on <laughs> Was This the Way We Really Play? Because <laughs> I was a huge fan of her back in, back then. Yeah. Well, I still am now. But, um, I'm a, a big like, fan of hers too because my kids watched that show when we were when they were little. That was my favorite show. <laughs> so from then I was like, I want to be an actress. Mm, that's I was cool. Like, I have to do it. And then, but like nothing happened for a few years until around the time that I turned 13, and I was actually looking out for some a couple of agencies. But unfortunately, the one that I um, found it wasn't exactly what we were thinking it was going to be. But, oh, okay. um, ever since then, like I've just been going around the indie circuit, and you know that's how I kind of got a few more roles. Cool. How about you, um, Brianna? Actually, for me, it I never wanted to be. It wasn't that wasn't on my radar when I was little. It was mm-hmm. it was always dancing for me. That was my my goal. It wasn't mm-hmm. until um, I got into college when I was eighteen that I realized I enjoyed it because. Um, Michelle had written another book and it was called Alliance at the time. And so we, uh, we filmed, we filmed it in, in two cabins in Oklahoma Hmm. and it's actually still stuck in editing. And I really don't know if it'll be able to come out, but the the point is, it's like, that's when I, that clicked with me. I loved the whole concept of it. I just loved being on Mm -hmm. set. I loved becoming another character and being in that mindset of that character. Mm -hmm. And so I've worked with Michelle on other projects, like like we said, could do and Wind or Stream, and I worked with another, with um, with a few other cinematographers for like um for for Dallas film um, for Dallas Alliance filmmakers, mm-hmm. and then I did this this short film called Practice What You Praise for Order Steps Productions, and I actually um, have you ever heard of AOD music? I actually cannot pronounce it, but um, when I was about fourteen or thirteen, I what I did a voiceover for one of her, um, oh. one of oh, her, wow. um, one of her, her things. Yes, and um, her name is um, uh, Linda Snyder, Snyderman, Snyderman or something, Snyderman. Yeah. And so, yeah, Lisa Snyderman. I'm sorry. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I was, I did it with her. And so, I've kind of just my journey to becoming what I am was uh, in a different pocket of things. I did different mm-hmm. things, and it just led to me wanting. Okay, this is what I want to do. Like this, whatever. That is, uh, I think that's really cool. I, especially like being a creative person. Um, I feel, you know, because I'm in my 40s, and, and y'all are, you know, obviously a lot younger than me. But I feel like throughout my, you know, life, that's that's how stuff has happened with me too. Like I've come across different things that I've, you know, kind of done. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it feels like that. It's like, you know, if you if you learn how to say yes to opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, and you try stuff out, sometimes you, you like it, sometimes you don't, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you He's figure out. right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let me do a station idea. I want to share a little story from yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. We're listening. You're listening to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Okay, so I have a, a little small uh, background in film as well. Um, I was part of a 48-hour film festival group here in Savannah in 2014 as a set photographer. and okay. um, But I, I only did it the one year. Um, and then last year, I had an opportunity to play um, on the show called America's Most Haunted. Oh, no, I think, no, I'm sorry. It's America's Most Terrifying. It's on Travel Channel, and um, mm-hmm. anyway, a friend of mine, uh, Ryan Dunn, here in Savannah, 
um, had posted that they were looking for extras. Well, come to find mm-hmm. out, have you ever seen those shows where they have like uh, people playing the characters that they're talking about, like a historic reenactment type thing? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It uh, yeah, it was like that. So I got to play like mm-hmm. four different roles, and even though oh, okay. I didn't have a oh, wow. yeah, I didn't have a speaking part as far as like talking. We mm-hmm. we were you know playing these characters or whatever, and I enjoyed it. I you know being on set or whatever, I enjoyed it, but. You know, I I don't have like I work a, a day job and I don't have um, you know that all the time. But what I was telling Michelle was that the this book that I wrote um, called Blood Thrasher, yeah. it's a vampire book that I that yeah. I wrote this with mind of wanting to have it made into a movie. And so, a um, friend of mine, um, Jason Usry, and I we talked about this a little bit. My friend Josh Vasquez and I we talked about it. Ryan and I talked about it. You know, I've talked to a couple other different people about wanting to, you know, make it into a movie. And I was talking with Michelle, you know, and I was so taken aback by how, you know, she has really done a lot of work with this whole production company, you know, the 4CW Media uh, uh, Productions. And um, so come back in, come coming back around to the story. <laughs> I've just set like the stage here. I'm sorry. But my friend Josh and I, we um, we. I've got this anthology coming out and I, I said, Hey, I want you to make like, I want you to make like a movie trailer for me, you know, for the book. Mm-hmm. I want it to be like live action. And so my friend Josh and I, he, he's done a couple of things and we've worked together on a lot of projects um, during the last five years or so, but we met yesterday and we are doing this thing called uh dead pixel pictures because okay. it's, it's going to be like a B rated kind of you know shorts like uh mm-hmm. horror sci-fi you know whatever b-rated type stuff but we're gonna do a live action um movie trailer for my book the anthology that's coming out and so my friend you know josh and i we, we spent a couple hours yesterday just you know working on that and that i feel like you know talking about doing stuff and trying stuff out you know my friend what he said to me i, I told him i said you know i've tried a lot of different things and you know, I, I, some things I try and I, you know, the, they don't work out and I just, you know, move on. I learn from it. And, uh, you know, he said to me, he was like, you know, um, he's like, you're always trying to make improvements though. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's the way I am. I, you know, like when I started the radio show to today, even though the same kind of format, I, you know, doing the casual conversation style, I was really nervous my first couple of weeks doing it. Uh, and, you know, and I'm used to, talking with people <laughs> so i can tell you yeah and so i love you know i love talking with uh creative people and that's one of the things i enjoy is you know connecting with people and you know building relationships with people and stuff like that so yeah absolutely so i i just want to share that with y'all because y'all are the first i mean like I, I did a little thing on facebook but i didn't really uh i didn't make like an announcement or anything like that but y'all are the first people i'm, I'm talking to outside of uh you know my little circle of friends <laughs> Oh, really? sharing it with the world I'm like here oh, hey thank you. i thought this thank would be you. appropriate to share it with the world because you know what y'all are doing and you know i think it's kind of neat so thank you what's uh what's next what are y'all um, working on next i mean like what projects do you have going on right now um actually a friend of mine is wanting to produce a short film that he wrote um <laughs> It's a series or a short film, and he asked asked me to be in as one of the roles, and so I believe we're gonna shoot that soon, like sometime later this year. And mm-hmm. um, I also just I'm like I um, I've been working on some choreography because I, I like to consider myself as a performer, like an, um, an entertainer. Mm -hmm. I do Mm -hmm. acting, dancing and choreography. So I'm working on those realms of things. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Um, for me, before COVID hit, um, I was working on this project. I can't say much because (laughs) legal reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Um, (laughs) um, I was working on this project and we were really like literally about the film um, a couple of days before Corona hit over here in America and it got really bad in Texas. And so I've been like kind of working on that, calling my um, scene partner every day and rehearsing. 
but um, we're not sure when we're going to film because okay. they want to wait to see how Corona is, you know, going to work out. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I'm writing something myself um, with my production company. It's not as, how should I say don't downplay yourself now. Car, as Miss Michelle, but yeah, I was gonna I say, mean, don't downplay yourself. <laughs> don't downplay mm-hmm. yourself. You never. I mean, I'm telling you, mighty things start in small, small places. That's so, true. Don't ever downplay yeah, yourself. That's... What's your production company called? <laughs> Dumpy G for Film. Sweet. This is called the Adam Messer Show. <laughs> <laughs> Go with it. I love it. No problem. <laughs> Let's work something out. That's what I'm saying. Like you, you know. Be proud of it. So tell me about um, this. Uh, tell me about this project. Uh, which one? Mine oh. or? Yeah, yours. Yeah. Um, well, basically, um, I want to write like a love story. I haven't gotten like the actual concept. I just know that I want to write like a love story. Uh, okay, um, cool. Not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my dog. He's trying to sleep. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not sure like what exactly um if i wanted the people to be younger or older right now but i just know that i want to write something revolving around a love story but we'll see maybe in the next couple of months i'll actually have like a script in hand nice nice i think you know that's the the neat thing about writing uh storytelling you know it doesn't matter like what medium you use i mean like that's one of the things i love about dance because um you know, we were talking uh, beforehand, Brianna, where my daughters are both, you know, they did ballet and um, you when you're when you're doing dance, you're telling a story. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're visibly showing a, a story and you convey those emotions. The same thing, Dominique, like when, you know, when you're talking about a love story, you know, it's conveying those emotions uh, because. Mm-hmm. Well, like uh, like earlier when you're talking about um uh, Brianna, when you're saying that you could say stuff when the character that you felt, but you don't normally vocalize. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so that is, is I, I feel like storytelling, I mean, like, you know, there's there's a lot of different genres out there, but good storytelling persists no matter what genre. Yeah, you know? story, storytelling is an art itself. Yeah, and every everything that, you know, like any form of entertainment is, is just another way to tell a story. So... It's pretty and that's neat. Kind of like what I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And that's kind of like what I'm struggling with right now is because I, I'm kind of like a perfectionist, so I, trying to go bigger and beyond. Than, oh yeah. Like you know, like mainstream stuff. Can so, I can I tell you what, I suffer from that too, and you know how I I, I fight that. I, I'm gonna ask you a question. Mm-hmm. I ask this a lot of times, but I'm gonna ask you a question. What's better than perfect? That is a very good question. Oh, wow. That got me thinking. I was like, what? All right. Um, um, can you give me perfect? a hint? What's better than perfect? I want to hear what you think, and I'm going to tell you what I think. Um, I guess better than perfect, I guess really there is no perfect. I think it's just whatever you're actually proud of and genuinely happy with what you created. Hmm. That's just how I look at it. Oh, she stole my answer. <laughs> okay i'll tell you what i think what's better than perfect done getting it done done oh that's, oh, that's true yeah that's, true. And that's, 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 that's something hard. i share a lot but i'm gonna tell you why because i am a perfectionist as well and um okay so here's an example let's just say you take a picture like you get like a really nice picture and you get like a bunch of feedback on it and you're like you know everybody's like oh my gosh right and then you take another picture that you think is better than that first one, and you, it's flat. Nobody responds to it. Have you ever had that happen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. A lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so that's the same kind of thing. Like, you know, who you are today is is a culmination of everything that you've been through in your life, you know, up until this very moment. And so you have mm. taste, and perfectionism is – like okay i have this vision in my mind of what i want it to be mm-hmm. and I, I i don't have the resources or maybe the skills or whatever to get to that level so i don't want to do it 
You know, and that's what I combat. That's what I have to fight against. That is true. Mm-hmm. And so what I've learned is what's better than perfect. That's a question I ask myself. <laughs> like, I mean, I've, I had to figure that out. Like, what's better than perfect? Done. Okay, so it might not be, you know, like, I'm not going to have all the resources or the skills or whatever. But when I get that finished product out and then I build on it for the next one and then the next and then the next and then the next. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, uh, with... You know, dance is a great one for example you don't when you have a choreography it's a group of you know different steps you know it's a yeah, group of different sense. moves that you have to put together it's not you have to learn the one move first and you have to learn the other and mm-hmm. you know you learn all these different things and then you put them together and you have your choreo you know your choreography right correct yes and it's like it's it, it's a lot of layering about it. It's like the basic skeleton. The skeleton is what I consider, like the steps, the choreography itself is the skeleton. Yep. But then you mm-hmm. have to add the style and then the costumes to feel all of it. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. makes it a dance. So it's like, like it's just a lot of layering upon layers. Yeah, and, and you don't learn all that in one day though, right? Absolutely not. No. So who you were five years ago to today, I mean, like, you know, you're perfect five years ago to today would be totally different, right? Totally different. But, I have learned so much about that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, um, Dominique. Like, you know, I know the feeling of being, you know, perfectionist. I'm just saying, you know mm-hmm. what? Do that first screenplay and it might be horrible. It might be terrible. It, you know, it might be like the worst thing you ever did, but you had it done <laughs> and it's done. And then you have something, you know, like. You can't edit a blank page, they say. You know? That's true. So That's true. My, I'm going to share this with y'all because <laughs> I want you to know. Out. My first, you, you really are. My first story that I ever did was total garbage. <laughs> like my first fiction story. <laughs> it took me 12 months to write <laughs> because I was like, I'm just going to wait till I'm inspired. And da, 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 da. Like the whole little cliche of being an author and all that. And, uh, mm-hmm. It took me 12 months to write it. And then when I wrote it, I was like, I was so proud of it because it was like the most I'd ever written for a story. And I sent it to a friend of mine and, and they, he kind of avoided me for a couple months and not avoided me, but like, you know, he didn't want to talk about it. And then I finally kind of pigeonholed him. I was like, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, he's like, to be honest with you, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was so like devastated because I felt like I was a good writer, being in you know college and business and all that. But um, you know, it was just garbage. I mean, literally, it was garbage to to the fact that even several years later, I I didn't do anything with it, and I asked somebody else to read it, and I was like, you know, it's garbage, but it's my garbage. You know, I made right, it. Right. Yes, ownership. <laughs> yeah, I made it. So, but that's why I'm, I'm saying. That's why I want to encourage you. Like, you know, don't ever downplay yourself, and uh, don't, you know, don't wait for it to be perfect. Just, just make it, you know, finished. You know, and then you can build on it. You know, because mm-hmm. that's I think that's a big hurdle that I see. You know, like if I had, uh, I feel like this. I always loved writing, right? But I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't, um, I love creative stuff. I, you know, like I was, I loved arts and things like that. But when I was 18 years old, um, getting into things, I was like, oh, I'm never going to make any money being an artist. So I went into business and mm-hmm. now I'm in my forties and I'm like, you know, I know I've got to pay bills and I got to do this and I got to do mm-hmm. that. But what yeah, really mm-hmm. makes me feel alive is my art. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sure you feel the same way, you know, the way you're talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we still, have, we still have to pay our bills and stuff like that, but, you know, whatever. Um, let me do the station IDs real quick, y'all. Okay. And it'll be, we'll be back in like two minutes, but everybody, you're listening today to WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And we'll be back in about two minutes. This is a message from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Social distancing means minimizing contact with people. It also means that if you are near someone in public, try to stay at least six feet away. 
The less contact people have with one another means the less opportunity for the virus to spread. Slowing the spread of the virus means that we can keep our health care system from becoming overwhelmed. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. You are attuned to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. The William Scarborough House is one of the earliest examples of Greek Revival architecture in a domestic setting in the South. Designated a National Historic Landmark in 1974, the Ships of the Sea Museum is a member of the National Trust for Historic Preservation Distinctive Destinations Program. More information can be found at shipsofthesea.org. Did you know that holes left behind at the beach are hazardous for baby sea turtles as they make their way to the ocean? Baby sea turtles are protected by filling in the holes that you or others dig on the beach. Hashtag Sea Turtle Safety Stickers and more information can be found at www.seaturtlesafety.org. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And you know what? I just want to add this to the segments there. So we're an all volunteer station. I'm a vol- you know, I've, I've been a volunteer for over the last two years and I am so happy that, you know, we have a chance to do the show and, and have people on like Brianna and Dominique um, and be able to talk with them about, you know, their stuff. So we can, we can only do that with your support. So when, you know, when you're listening to the show or if you're listening to the podcast later on after the live radio show, you know, just think about it. You know, if you, if you like what we're doing here and you, you know, want to support over 60 something radio hosts, maybe consider doing a donation. You don't have to do like a monthly thing. If you want, you can do like a one-time donation. Even a dollar goes a long way. You would, you wouldn't believe it, but you know, uh, $1 is actually going to help out if you, if you want to do it. So like right before, uh, we were doing the, we were talking about like, I was, I kind of got on a little, like a little sidetrack about <laughs> like what was better than perfect and then done. And that stuff, like all that stuff that I was saying, it's all stuff that I tell myself, like, because I have to, you know, I have to deal with, you know, that I guess it's, a uh, imposter syndrome, you know, um, people, like for me, for example, I'm like, Oh, you know, nobody's going to like my stuff. Nobody's going to read my stuff. Nobody's going to do whatever, you know? Um, but I've come to find out that there are some people that like my stuff and those, those are my people, you know, my stuff's not for everybody. (laughs) I've come to accept that. I mean, like, I'm like, okay, I'm good with that. You know, the folks that do like my stuff, those are the people that I really have been focusing on and trying to like, Hey, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't definitely was not trying to say like, you know, that you don't do stuff or whatever at all, but I just wanted to you know, share that with you because <laughs> I didn't want yeah, it to come actually, across that way. Yeah, no, I agree with what you just said about how there are some people who do like your stuff and not everything's for everyone because, um, I like, I'm also a business owner. I have a, I have a business called BRJ productions and mm. under that I deal with different factions like acting, dance and choreography. And it's just one of those things where I, I learned recently well I've always known but it just kind of really hit home it's like you have to think about who your audience is yes. like what exactly do they want and then you know give it to them in the best way that you possibly can and so I really do resonate with that and um and all things that I do so I, I see what your point is I and, love that you just said that Brianna because my friend and I <laughs> It just this interview fell in my lap on Friday with a guy named Tony Ray Morris, and um, it, I what you know because I had the weekend scheduled or whatever, but his this guy sent me a message about his new book and we were talking about it, and we were talking about that same exact thing, you know. Um, I had a professor named Dr. David Taylor, communication arts English professor, and <clears throat> he said this about the audience. Okay. You got to focus on your audience. You got to think about your audience. He said this, mm-hmm. give them what they want. Give it to them real good. Mm-hmm. And I loved that because I, did, I was like, yeah. you know, if, and there's a, there's this book that I'm listening to called big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. 
and mm-hmm. she was talking about like you know if if you're making stuff you know you should be thinking about who you're making it for yeah you know absolutely and if and I, this is what i love about what she said too because she said if you're not making it because you love it then you're not doing the right thing right mm-hmm. and, and i'm paraphrasing here and she said that you know some people are going to you know really connect with your stuff other people are not and i feel that is so true you know because there are people that like my poetry but they don't like my fiction work and there are other people that i know that they don't like any of my writing and it's just not because of me it's just that they don't like fiction or they don't like poetry and i get that you know it's just like somebody who might like opera you know a lot of people might have a misconception about opera because they don't know anything mm-hmm. about opera or ballet or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they just don't know anything about it. So they're like, oh, I'm just, you know, I don't, whatever. And I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I, you don't have to. Because I'm kind of dealing with that right now. So, like, I'm starting my bonnet business and I'm trying to find my niche and, like, the people who are um, interested in buying them. What is this they now? I haven't started yet. What is All it? Right? What it's a called a bonnet business? What is that? Oh yes, sir. It's like um, what people of color, especially black women, wear um when they go to sleep to protect their hair. Oh, so like, oh yes, I know what you're talking about. I know I've seen that. I just didn't know they called it a bonnet. You see, when I think of a bonnet, yeah. I think of like the mm-hmm. prairie days, like when they had the little you know little oh. house on prairie, the bonnets like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, are you selling bonnets? I was like, oh, I didn't know that was even like popular. <laughs> With the, uh, oh, like yeah. we call that a nightcap like i've heard of it be, being called a nightcap but so it's called a bonnet that's cool see so um i'm just now getting started it's called hairline stitch i only have like about like 18 followers on instagram so if y'all if y'all want one i'm gonna go buy it but um that's really what i'm struggling with because i'm trying to find like who's interested in buying from me and buying the product mm-hmm. and I um and honestly um we on the station here we could talk about stuff but we can't you know call to action for the sales just because we're a community radio station but I totally get what you're saying it connecting with mm-hmm. that audience is you know it really is like a sale you know you're trying to sell mm-hmm. people on the idea of hey I've got something that you might be interested in you know and connecting mm-hmm. with them and I'll I'll tell you <clears throat> my philosophy about um these kind of things is that. I love to connect pe- with people uh, with relationships first in mind. I mean, the transactions mm-hmm. come, um, but you know, we're, if, if you think about like where we live today and, and what we've got going on with social media and smartphones and everything, you know, we're being advertised to 24 seven, you know, mm-hmm. with the shows that we watch, the music we listen to, you know, the social media, you know, we're, we're being advertised to, 24 7 um See, oh, go ahead no um, i remember do, writing an essay um for my um school last semester um it talked about how even if you don't want something if you're shown it enough like within seven to ten times within a day even if you don't want it you're going to end up you know wanting it eventually. yeah yeah it's a, it's the same thing with uh it's the same thing with like uh, any kind of slogan. Like if I go ba da 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 da, who's mm-hmm. that? You know, you you know it's McDonald's. You know what I mean? Because we've heard it yeah. so many millions of times or whatever. And I I feel like connecting with the audience, especially creatively. You know, like you've got a product, mm-hmm. a physical product, and you you know you've got an audience of people who need that product, and it's connecting with those folks that need that product, right? And so it's it's the same thing with with the dance, you know. It's the same thing with the books, the movies, or whatever. It's you know when when I say need, it you know it might be like a luxury item, you know. I know I know that entertainment and things like that are luxury items. I mean, it's not like you know a necess- necessity where hey, I've got you know you got to have this because it's going to help you provide food, shelter, or clothing. Mm-hmm. You know, but also creating that need, it's like okay, well, you know why why not get this, you know, this bonnet, you know, I'll have a custom made bonnet just for me. It's just a one of a kind, you know, yeah. or why not get, you know, a, a producer to come and actually, you know, give us professional choreography 
for this dance that we want to do you know yeah exactly yeah it it, it in, yeah interesting you said this because like um my business i also i provide the service of choreography um like um, i've mentioned it in its original choreography but how i did it instead of just going out and saying that i do it i did i asked a, a variety of people that mm -hmm. i knew I, I i sent them questions basically like a survey and i asked them questions like how do they prefer choreography being taught to them do they like it through mm -hmm. tutorial do they like to do it in person and i asked them um does it have the choreographer have to be well known or mm -hmm. can it just be someone like a, a new choreographer mm -hmm. and they, i got feedback and i based it off i based my business model off of that feedback or the past the past workshops that i've done um these past few months um i've had someone ask questions to the people that i taught because mm. um, mm. i was unable to physically do it myself at the time but like they they would ask the questions and then the, the students that i taught they would give the feedback of what they liked about the workshop what they didn't what they would want more of and i just you go based off of that so it's mm. that's another way i guess of marketing where you kind of just directly ask your audience what do you want and then you know if it's in your interest or if it's in your um capability giving it to them that way i love i love that you said that brianna because <clears throat> it sounds like you two could work together <laughs> i love it and it, it sounds like you also focus on relationship first mm -hmm. you know you're focusing on like what it not not all about me all about me it's all about like what do you want how can i serve you better how can i yeah. give you you know this service because you have a you know you have a highly um uh, I don't want to say uh, unique because that's kind of a generic term, but mm -hmm. you have a, a a very narrow focus on the product and service that you're offering. You know, it's not like I mean, I don't know how many choreographers are out there offering the same service that you are, and I don't know how many clients mm -hmm. would be out there. You know, but it seems like that that would be kind of like you know you have to have a target. You know, like you have to have a you know there's a, a specific group of people that you're mm -hmm. looking for. You know. Like you're not yeah, trying to hit yeah. like a general wide audience. You're trying to hit like yes. you know this certain sector of people that are you know looking for that. And the same thing yes, uh, with I you, do. Dominique. It sounds like you know you're you're targeting you know like a certain group of people that you know they mm -hmm. would like this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, but it's just the matter of fact of finding who will like the well, thing. I love honestly. Brianna, I love the model that you just shared with all of us because that is a great way to get started. You know, because what what I did with um, I'm gonna, I'm just going to share this. First of all, I am not a best selling author. Okay, I'm just going to preface it like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not down on myself. I'm just saying because some people are like, oh, you know, if you're not selling a bunch of whatever, I'm just talking about my own personal experience here. But I have been writing for the newspaper here in Savannah um, since 2014 as a published freelance journalist. And mm -hmm. when I got into fiction writing, I wanted to write stuff that I enjoyed, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I wrote a vampire novel, um, kind of set like an 80s style horror action film. Since then, mm -hmm. I've worked, you know, towards that. And last year I was in an anthology with Rachel Brune, who played Minerva in uh, When Android's Dream. Um, mm -hmm. oh, episode yeah. three. <laughs> mm -hmm. she um, did a job. Yeah, I think she did a great job. Um, but I worked with her on an anthology, and so I was like, you know what? I like this. Uh, I I had been wanting to do an anthology for a while. It was the start of this thing called mm -hmm. Savannah Quill in 2016, and I've been wanting to do an anthology for a while. Um, didn't really, you know, know enough people to do it, and uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this, right? But with my Savannah Quill stuff, I've, I've done a lot of charitable things, you know, meet and greets, um, fundraisers for the Ronald McDonald House here in Savannah. And um, I wanted to separate that because what I've done with, with the Savannah Quill has all been charitable. I wanted to separate that so that when I, you know, was selling my books, you know, as a publisher, that I could have you know, the focus with the books to, you know, connect with readers, you know, to mm -hmm. sell, you know, to mm -hmm. talk to them about and sell, you know, them books, 
you know, but I want to be able to separate the two, the charitable stuff from the, you know, the profitable stuff. And, you know, even connecting like with the Savannah Quill, the, the idea is to connect writers and readers, to promote literacy. So I have a clear, distinct mission statement with Valhalla Books. Mm-hmm. It is to provide compelling fiction so that people love to read again. You know, so mm-hmm. clear, okay. distinct mission statement, you know, they overlap. But the reason why I separated it was because I learned, I was like, okay, well, you know, I don't feel comfortable trying to do a charitable thing when I've got a book company that, you know, I'm trying to sell books, you know, so I I want to separate the two, you know, but it was all a process of like, okay, you know, I, you know, the, uh, from the first time that I published a book to the newest one that I've, you know, I've got, that's almost ready to, to go live. I've picked up a lot Mm -hmm. since then. You know, I've learned a lot since okay. then, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, it's just like talking with, uh, Michelle, you know, she was talking about, you know, how much she's learned. Let me do a station ID. And then I want to just share something Michelle shared with me that I thought was really cool. Everybody you listening to WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM WRUU.org. We are Savannah soundings community radio with global soul. Uh, Sebastian, you mind playing a little bit? Right, this is Sebastian Messer, everybody. Thank you so much, Bass. Okay, so you know something that really uh, got me with with uh, talking to Michelle last week. I asked her. I said, "What was something?" And I want to ask you, ladies, the same question. Mm-hmm. What was something that when you first started out that today you wish you had known and you would have done differently, and something that you do differently now? Mm-hmm. Well, I would say that. Well, as far as um, with agencies, what I've learned along the way is you do not pay when they sign you. Like, for instance, agents only take a percentage of, you know, of the work that they give you. Mm-hmm. And because that's how, like, I started out. That's what, that's what happened with, like, the first agency that I went to. I it turned out it was like, a vanity agency? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are vanity I, publishers out there too, and I I warn people against that all the time. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a great so I kinda, example. I kind of had to learn from that, but I think I, that's about it. I think for me, I really honestly don't think I've done anything different, and I think it's because not saying that everything I did was perfect. It's because of the fact not all of it, not all of it was perfect. I had to mm-hmm. learn with each and every step that I did every all the people I worked with all um uh whether it was directors and talkers or co-stars um the things that I learned along the way because like I said acting was never on my radar when mm-hmm. I was growing mm-hmm. up it only came into my radar about four years ago so mm-hmm. I learned to be honest I consider it like a crash course I mm-hmm. learned a lot of it about the industry in the past four years straight and so I really truly don't think there's anything I would have changed I just it's just it's all a learning process and I came out better for it later let me ask you I I do like that too let me ask you then um as a follow-up um Brianna what is Mm -hmm. a a piece of advice you would give to someone starting off then I would say don't be so hard on yourself and do not compare yourself to someone else Mm -hmm. and their success because that is one of the things I struggled with a lot and I always mm-hmm. told myself, like, you know, I'm here, but they're there. And I'm like, well, they had to go for to get there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like exactly. you you are you're all on different paths. You all have different goals. And it's just thing that you have different things you have to work on. Some people are naturally talented in one thing and others are better at other things. So it's just like like you said, it's just. 
focus on what, first of all, what makes you happy, what actually mm-hmm. makes you genuinely happy, and then just um, cra- um, working on your craft, you know, mm-hmm. getting better at it, seeing who, um, seeing how you can make a, how you can succeed and excel at it, doing everything you possibly can, and just focusing on yourself and what makes you happy in that realm versus, I mean, I'm not saying you can't take advice from others because, like, you know, I take advice from other people. I ask their opinion mm-hmm. and um, whether they're experienced or not. And mm-hmm. that also helps me and contributes to me. So basically, yes, just my number one thing is do not compare yourself to someone else. I yeah. love that. <laughs> I love that. I really do. I um, Your mom, you. Michelle, she, she said uh, one of the things in, in, in kind of like not the same realm, but I asked her the same question. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't ask her the follow up question, but because she said that uh, yeah. what she would have done um, differently and that she puts in the forefront of her mind now is production. You know, like, how is she going to produce this scene or whatever? And that came into play yesterday when I was talking with my friend because, you know, we're doing this dead pixels pictures thing. And we want it to be, like, no budget, low budget, micro B <laughs> B movie type yeah. stuff. And um, so the idea came, like, so Josh has done a couple of uh, videos. I've done some uh, videos, trailers in the past before, but nothing live action. And, um, well, I did do a live action one, but it was a, of my shadow. <laughs> but mm. was, it, I'll have to share it with you some other time. But anyway, uh, it came up though, because I, I, I said it to him yesterday. I said, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I have, I have actually scheduled the first shoot for the book trailer, the movie trailer or whatever. And okay. so we've got, um, you know, got the, uh, the actors, we've got the location and all that. Now, the book stuff and the B movie stuff, we're we're gonna, Josh and I are gonna be working together on it. But I told him I was like, you know, this is the thing. It's like, um, I have ideas, he's got ideas, and you know, we're like, okay, what can we do? You know, right now, what can we do? You know, and so we we were working together on that, and you know, we're basically gonna you know just be starting from zero. You know, I mean, not, not from zero because yeah. we both have experience doing different stuff. But, you know, we're just starting off like really fresh. And, you know, I, I love that idea, you know, because I tell my kids the same thing. I, I feel the same way. It's like I don't compare myself to other people. I, I like the Michael mm-hmm. Jordan philosophy of I just try to be better than who I was yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. and that's that's the only person I've got to compete against. And, you know, I, I be honest with you, I try a lot of stuff, but it's all you know, like all the different stuff that I do, like the radio show, the writing, you know, the whatever it's all related to storytelling it all goes back to storytelling yeah. and all of that is just a way to connect with people you know that's all it is uh, it's like a way to connect with people you know for me that's how i felt mm-hmm. so i love i love being able to connect with people and i love what you said um you know and, and dominique i think that's a very important part too because i have i have talked ad infinitum about not yeah. Now, there's a difference between paying for legitimate services like editing and cover design and that kind of stuff. But there mm-hmm. there are vanity publishers out there, vanity talent agencies, anybody that says, hey, you know, you pay us five hundred thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, twenty five. I have I, I know. And this is no joke and I'm not exaggerating, but I have a friend mm-hmm. that spent over ten thousand dollars to have a book published. Oh, wow. No. Yeah, and they the company took advantage of uh, this person, and you know, and I, I felt terrible. You know, I felt terrible. It almost discouraged them to the point where they didn't want to write anymore. And I, I, oh, I was no. like, no, 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 you got to write. You know, you're, you're a great storyteller. Oh. But I tell people that all the time. So I'm glad that you brought that up because there are unscrupulous people out there who do want to yes, take sir. advantage of. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to say naive, you know, but people who are really energetic about like wanting to do mm-hmm. something. You know, and they, you know, they're not really experienced as, as well. You know, like if I were to say, Hey, I'm going to get an agent. I don't know anything about getting an agent, you know, but I have, I have friends that do, you know, I have people that I trust that I can talk with, but if you don't have somebody who, where do you start? Where do you, you know, you're like, Oh, how do I do this? You have to like Google and even sometimes you don't even know about, about them then. Right. Right. So uh, we've only got like about a minute or two left. Um, I, one of the things I like to do is like to do a shout out on the show and then like any final announcements that you want to talk about. So, Dominique, would you mind going first? Um, 
I would like to shout out my mom and my dad for being there throughout all of this, um, yeah. taking me to sets, taking me to auditions, and helping me film my auditions, as well as my brother and my sister. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Future projects? You got anything you want to uh, uh, talk about real quick or say? Sorry? Do you have any future projects you want to t- say or like just to make a little announcement? or? Um, is there? Okay. Oh, yes. I do. I am working on another film. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, it's called Insanely Infatuated. Um, it's in pre-production because I'm still writing it and I'm looking to cast um, some people, but it's going to have to film after COVID. But other than that, yeah. Nice. And Brianna, how about you? Do you want to do a shout out and any announcements? Yes, I actually do want to shout out my mom and dad because they have been extremely steady force in my life. They have helped me realize, you know, recognize what I like, what I want to do, and help me um, the, with the mindset of being my own boss, my own ownership and not letting anybody control my life but me. So I really appreciate them for that and helping me get on this path. And um, also my friends, you know, the ones who have been steady with me and who have been following me and my my dreams and just supporting me in that way. That is cool. And then you also said uh, that, uh, did you want to do the announcement about the 4CW Media Productions? There's actually, yes, um, um, 4CW Media Productions is doing another series. Um, I be- is called Lover's Contract, and I believe it will be filming soon, I think around November. And I'm very, very excited to do that to do that project with them. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much today. I really appreciate y'all being on the show, and I definitely would love to have y'all back. Uh, I know I was talking with Michelle about um, doing some other interviews with uh, cast members and all, but I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. having y'all on the show today, and uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for having us. No thank you. All right, everybody, stay tuned, and we're going to be up here at the 4 o'clock hour. So I appreciate y'all listening. You are listening to WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul.